Hey folks, going through my content trying to decide how to start today's video, I suddenly had an aha moment that actually links this year's flooding with the flooding we had last year. Um, this is the first thing that I saw here. We got more rain coming, which isn't a good thing considering the flooding. And this was February 23rd. This is two days after the flood. So from devastating floods to freezing rain, one round one of two blasts of stormy weather began Friday for southern Ontario with the threat of more rain for watersheds already strained and saturated from flood emergencies this week. And I look down here and I see this. Spring is ahead. How will La Nina impact your spring weather? Well, uh, if you don't know what La Nina is, uh, there's two weather conditions. Uh, one is El Nino and the other is La Nina. And it is based on weather... Or water temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean and the trade winds will blow one direction and the warmer water will accumulate at one end of the ocean and during the other opposite event I can't remember which one's El Nino which one's La Nina but during one event the warmer water is at one end of the ocean and during the other event the winds have actually changed direction and all the warmer water comes the other way so whichever one is which, I don't remember at this moment. But either way, they affect our jet stream, which determines you know, the dividing line between cold and warm, and also where all these extra high precipitation storms kind of end up going. So if you remember from last year, uh, the year before that, we had a very strong, I think it was the strongest ever El Nino event, and that kind of led into the strongest ever La Nina event. And that La Nina event is what gave us a super saturated spring and led to that sudden flooding that we had in June. Well, apparently, we're in a La Nina situation again this year. So I'm seeing that as an explanation as to why this is happening. And the scary thing is we're not even in springtime yet. This is still winter. It's February. This is normally our coldest month where we get our most extreme temperatures and generally our... our well, I wouldn't say highest snowfall rates, but um, cold, frozen snow, not heavy, wet stuff. So it tends to blow around and, and drift and cause all kinds of havoc. So I thought that was kind of interesting to make that kind of a, a link between the two events. And when I went out today, you can see that the water's down. Yeah, the construction site here, it's mostly gone. I left some ice behind, but the water itself's gone. Same as the dollar store parking lot so I'm pretty much dry now and I know I don't show much I didn't pause or anything but looking at the river it's down about four feet from what it was at before and I'm looking at the forecast that's a really really nice temperatures coming up unheard of temperatures for the end of February but that's okay I'll take them Unfortunately, it's going to melt the snow faster and saturate the mud faster, but no, at least the temperature is warm. I don't like it when it's cold. And here's a look at our incoming rain. Now, you may have noticed the radar looks a little different. You remember the old one, it was really kind of bland looking. And now the, the colors are richer, there's more detail to it, and this app has so much more features. Uh, I was using Weather Underground on my phone for those maps, and this one is called Storm. It's still Weather Underground, but it, it's a, a new app that they've got out, and this one is so much nicer. I went out late in the evening, and I went to Timmy's. I got a bit of a surprise. I saw a familiar face in there, and apparently somebody that used to work at uh, Tim Hortons in Hanover is now working at the Tim Hortons in Wingham. Apparently he moved here too. <laughs> Not like I really ever talked to him, but no, it's just nice seeing a familiar face. Kind of makes me feel a little more at home. And one thing I noticed here is the traffic at night is so much quieter. 
Actually, all of Wingham is just so much quieter than Hanover. There's practically nobody around whatsoever. Everything's closed except for Tim Hortons and Circle K here, formerly Max. But it's just, it's so peaceful. It's just so quiet. And not really much else has been happening in the last little bit, so I'm going to end the video here. And I'm going to show you something that I found really cool about uh, in Brantford. The communication between the Public Works Department and the Green River Conservation Area monitoring what's happening. And it's really kind of kind of neat video. And up to this point so far, there's been no word on the boy that was washed away by the river. I still haven't found him. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I've lived here for most of my life and never seen anything even close to this. This is a retaining wall to restrict the water and ice debris from coming over. It's obviously never been this high before. I've never seen it like this. The Grand River is busting at the seams. Today, John Middleton, lead hand for Brantford Public Works, needs to empty the storm system. Looks like we're winning now. We've dropped it about two feet. Perfect. So we've exposed the inlet pipe now on this side. Yep. And I'm thinking the rest of the day we'll have to keep pumping here. The system is full and they need to make room in case there's more flooding. What we were doing was pumping the water from the storm system over the wall and back into the river to relieve pressure on the system. Because if we get any more precipitation or that, there's not any room in the system left to hold it. It's a race against time. They don't know if this giant ice clog will force the water over the top. We're certainly keeping a very close eye on the river, both visually and through a series of uh, data systems and gauges throughout the watershed. A few kilometers away in Cambridge, Cam Linwood is monitoring the sensors in the Grand River. Through Brantford specifically, typically this time of year, we see river levels of about half a meter. Uh, when we started looking at it in, uh, during this event, we were seeing a river level rise of between six and seven meters. It's the result of some unusual weather patterns. So typically throughout the river system, we usually see thickness of anywhere between four and 10 inches of ice sometimes. Because this December was so incredibly cold for so long, it forms some really strong, really thick ice, upwards of two and three feet we're seeing, or even greater than that in some areas. That ice created the jams. Where we started seeing challenges exist first was certainly in the Cambridge area, where that ice jam had set up, and it was starting to back more ice and more water up behind it. Then along came a huge rainfall and unusually warm temperatures. Record rainfall, significant ice, and certainly significant temperatures. Perfect storm. There's another surge coming. They want everybody off the river. There's another surge coming on the way. The police are saying it'll be here within the hour. So they're asking us to pack up and get out of here for safety reasons. That heavy police presence and that municipal response was primarily focused on the water that was at risk of coming over to the top of those dikes. Uh, they wanted to make sure that they were evacuating a large area of people. We just wanted to make sure that people were well aware of what was going on and certainly out of harm's way. I do believe it has uh, risen a little more. Let's hope this holds. Luckily, the ice washes through the system with no significant flooding. Good news for residents here, but other communities are still at risk. We are going to continue to monitor our downstream communities throughout the rest of the week.